It's Steve, Cryptozoology Paranormal Museum out in Gettysburg in the battlefield. <clears throat> it's really cold. Freezing out there. I don't know what it is, uh, 29 or something like that. I think it's gotten a little warmer now. Maybe it's in the upper 30s a little bit, but it's crazy cold. Uh, I want to come out here and play. It's uh, roughly 10, 15 in the morning. Uh, unfortunately, this time of the year, the battlefield closes at uh, sundown. So for me to come out and play with the, uh, some of the equipment, but thank God the thermals <clears throat> work day and night. I guess these cannons here are getting the gas delivery. I love Gettysburg. I come here all the time. The reason I happen to be up here on a cold, cold day is I'm up here in Pennsylvania for a, a, a totally different thing. So business for the uh, museum. So I figured let me make a pit stop here for the day before I continue back up for the meeting I have tomorrow, Wednesday. But uh, yeah, I'm going to hit a couple of spots here to see what I can see. Maybe let me film, maybe you guys will pick up something. Now it's not like everything has to be at night. <clears throat> a lot of daytime sightings here. Uh, one of the sad things, I went around the corner. First, like, everything's closed. It's off season, of course, you know, a little bit early. But, uh, so, of course, my stupid diet, I'm eating my own food and stuff. But I really don't remember where everything is here. Kind of crazy. But, uh, <clears throat> one of the places I used to go to all the time is a little shop around the corner. They sell Ouija boards and all kinds of fun, silly stuff. I want to turn here. This might be where I want to turn. I think there's a little round top here. Or Devil's Den, I think, a little round top's up on top. Yep, I think I'm actually lucked out and turned at the right spot. Anyway, right, it turns out the uh, store I went to, or wanted to go to, it's gone. It burnt down. They tore it down, so I feel bad. It was a, a woman with her mother, and the woman's probably around my age, and her mother was obviously older, and, uh, running a place and had a friend and stuff. And they had some nice stuff and they're very good people, so I hope they move to another location. So much of that since uh, COVID, I've come down. A lot of little restaurants, mom and pop places just didn't survive. <clears throat> I'll show you some of these things. Yeah, do you not just love all the cannons and stuff? And this is Devil's Den up in front of us here, if I remember correctly. And then you've got, I believe this to be a little round top up on the top there. So they are firing from up there, down here. And it's so damn cold, you're not gonna get me out very much, I can tell you that right now. And I brought some, you know, hoodies and warm clothes, but I didn't think I was gonna have to wear like, you know, six layers of heavy duty winter clothes. I mean, here, look at this. Let me just back up a little bit. <clears throat> I'll tell you, I'm not kidding about how cold it is here. This is the water in the little stream here. It's almost all frozen. Is that crazy? I mean, it's still snow around. The uh, <clears throat> hotel parking lot still got piles of snow I guess it was plowed and pushed as it melted I mean I'm coming from North Carolina none of that none of that we have a 39 degree day we're going like whoa we're cold I mean, we can't, don't get wrong we get below that sometimes but you know apparently it's been cold here for quite a while there's nothing to melt Okay, I'm gonna pull over here in a second. Another, you've, another thing you notice, no one's in the park but me. No one's stupid enough to be out here in this cold. That's why most of the places are closed. But I'm gonna try the thermal, turn her on. Now it doesn't look, these things do not work through the glass. They work incredibly poorly through. Okay, it's booting up. These are the tie pans. I have a little bit of a boot up time. But I'm gonna look for anything up in the woods there. I'm 
I've actually seen something hot up there, hotter. I'll get a picture of it. I'm gonna say it looks like a person, but just, this is one of the newer ones. We've gotten much higher quality than the other ones. And you guys have seen some of the stuff we've gotten with the flares. These are amazing. They do work during the day. Although, George and they were telling me they prefer, I'm, I got on a white hot right now. They prefer black hot during the day. So I'm gonna switch it up here just to check it out. But uh, let me show you what I'm taking, looking at here. It's the woods up here. And that's Devil's Kitchen up there. This is Devil's Den here, which I'll try to find the sign. I'm trying not to open all the windows, keep a little bit of heat in here. You can see the sign for Devil's Den there. These are all the rocks and stuff. A lot of people killed here. that picture. You got this weird thing on there. I'm hoping I got that picture. It looked like spider webs across the lens. I hope I got that. That was just the strangest thing. That's odd. I'm getting this really weird thing coming across the lens. Now I'm doing black hot. Let's see if that makes a difference. That's weird. I can see something over there now. Hearing car doors. It's not even a person down here for me to take a photo of to compare it to what I'm picking up. So, okay. Triangular fields up here. That's another hotbed for death. Actually, it's right down here. So I can get past these bushes. This is windy here. It's pretty cool. This, this is gorgeous. But it's a little bit warmer. You can walk around without freezing your ass off. I 
I'm going to hop out over here just briefly. You can see all the monuments and stuff. You guys will be to see me move in front. All right, I'm back in. Cold out there, real cold. Yeah, I went back around this way. That hill you saw me go up a little bit steep. I didn't want to slip and bend up, slip and break my ass. I didn't want to do it on camera. Whew, roll up the window. Let's go for a little ride. Okay, I'm getting some weird stuff. That was first how I used the camera here too. So I'll go back through and I got this really odd sort of thing. All of a sudden it's like a, a, like a, a web or, or something in front of the camera and it would stay with it. It's like something got permeated in the frame. I think I got it recorded. In the distance on Black Hot, I can see something out in the woods. I don't know what. Okay, this is all new. And it's so damn cold. It's not like I could be out there doing too much to uh, debunk any of this stuff. I'll just post some of the stuff I've got. But uh, this is cool. I'm happy I came down here. I just wish it was warmer. I do love me Gettysburg. Love the history. At least daytime, too. One thing nice about that is I can see where I'm going. Let them go. I'm assuming they know better than I do. I'm going to go this way. One way begins. This is another thing. I always forever get up on the one-way road going the wrong damn way. night though I mean there's no street lights here obviously and if you don't be familiar with some of these roads it pays to come in like this time of the day kind of get a rough idea this when you come through later you kind of go like yeah this doesn't feel right I think I'm going the wrong way and find out where you're going but if you guys watch your uh, the video you can easily pick up something that I'm not gonna see you can see it's a nice thing about this weather is it's like no leaves in the tree you can see some distance here Speaking of which, let's see what I see over here. here. I got a car behind me, so I can't be too slow. There's a little spot I can pull over here and let them by. At least one thing you have to worry about the mud, everything's frozen. I'm not gonna get stuck on frozen dirt. Let's pass it here. Can't see nothing through the glass. I'm forgetting people looking at me like I'm crazy. This vehicle's got all the markings for the Cryptozoology Paranormal Museum on it. So people go like, well, who are they? Yeah. I just forget that. People pull up and they'll be tailgating me on the highway going, well, what is this idiot doing? And they're taking pictures in the back of the vehicle. I think 
like have to drive this thing for three years or whatever it is I'd be used to it by now, but nope. I'm staying at Cemetery on the Hill Inn, which is appropriate for being down here. It's a place I usually like to stay. It's got a little uh, porch on the outside, which has no chairs and it's cold, so who the hell's going to sit out there anyway? But I like in the summer to be to sit out there on my laptop, work on my videos or whatever, have a cup of coffee or a cold drink, beer, whatever, and watch the world go by on Steinway Street. But right now, I mean, there's nobody. There's a handful of us that came through. And I'm going to get up to this field up here. I just want to, any field shots, I want to be able to look distance and see if I see anything. I've already gotten a couple of weird things, and I've been out here 10 minutes, so I don't know what the heck, so I have to go back through it. Nothing earth-shattering, trust me, but it's just, you know, getting used to the new equipment. I've never used these out here. Now, we have used the thermals that plug into the bat bottom of the... Uh, bottom of the you know like phones and stuff they're, they're made for close up this thing but these things are made to reach out and grab stuff you know good for like 300 yards you know. okay we're gonna pull over here we got some fields here i can look across get some distance a lot of these fields again i'm just the whole area this is nothing but hopefully it didn't knock the video off it usually does here. Something's telling me to turn this way. Although I see fields that way. There. No, it says do not enter. Okay, that solves my problem. I'm on a one-way road. Makes my decision for me. So much for instinct saying go that way. Look at the size of some of these monuments here. I mean, this is nothing compared to Pennsylvania. I mean, these things are just huge. I think it's got to be well over 20 feet. If you like monuments, this is the place to be. I should have a number for you, but it's a ton. And I've actually taken little trails out in the middle of nowhere where, like, nobody goes. <coughs> and up up there, there'll be like a little area, a little dust over there. See a little mini tornado there. And uh, there'll be a monument out in the middle of the woods, you know, where some artillery was set up. You can see it's just everywhere, everywhere. I like to get up to since this works out. I can look out in the distance. Ah, oh, there's the Pennsylvania Monument in the distance. You see that thing? Stop right here. Past the stop sign. I don't know if I can zoom in enough. You see the size of that thing? If I can, I'll try to get to it, but. Yep, just a little lump in the road. I think if I make a right here, I can get to it that way. I'm rolling up the window. This is Strickland Avenue. Uh, I'm turning on to God knows what. This looks like a two-way road, though. I think this is actually the road I was on before, so I think if I go down, it will turn me down. Pennsylvania Monument is huge. You can actually go up at the stairs going up. and It's like a second and third level of height. I don't know. Someone can look that up, tag it in there. But uh, I know it's going to be uh, the equivalent of like a four or five story building. Or 
photo tour. This, that's got a mailbox, that's someone's ranger's home. How cool to live out here as a ranger. Live on the battlefield itself. Although that's something the regulars will tell you every time we refer to this as the battlefield. They'll tell you the whole town was a battlefield. It wasn't just here. And that's true. There's all these buildings in town, downtown Gettysburg with obviously lots of bullet holes in them some have cannonballs still wedged in the walls you know I think I'm gonna turn down here just because because I can That windshields. Ah, I think I'm caught up in the Pennsylvania Monument. Figured it out. Now, there's a story here. When I was here years ago with uh, one of my interns and her sister, we came up here for our Gettysburg uh, Battlefield Bash three-day event. So it was Julia and her sister. And uh, we did a ghost tour with Mark Nesbitt's group, and it went really long. And uh, the park closed at 10, I believe, back then. So I finally got out here and I told the girls, so we got to move. Let's go do a little ghost hunting. So we pull up there. We pull up to the monument. Nobody's around, but there's a fire out in the field. What parks, national parks, are going to let you have a fire out there? So it's a strange thing. So I pull, up, pull in, my headlights are kind of facing the fire. And as uh, we start to walk up, almost out of nowhere, this guy comes up in period clothes, just dirty, actually physically stunk. And he had this tin he was eating out of. And he mentioned that that was his fire and stuff. And I don't remember the whole story right now what the conversation was, but he's asking us if, we could, you know, if he could help us, help us find something. And I'm, you know, I'm talking about the names on there. So now we're just here to ghost hunt and stuff. And he's going, let me help you. So I'm telling the girls, like, you know, take pictures. So I'm trying, I got a couple of pictures of the guy. They all came out really fuzzy and odd. And uh, so they cursed the girls, go running up the thing. You know, so like, I'm saying, stay here, stay here. So I turn around, the guy's gone. Now, as you see this place, as I'm pulling up on it, it's huge. There's nothing around it. There's no place to hide. And he was back over here behind. I don't know if I can go around the circle. The stairs are on this side, so we walked around. He met us about midway, and then he was just gone. So as we climb up, I mean, you can see you can go to the top of that thing with that uh, sphere is up on top. You, you literally look over the edge there. So how the hell can I not see this guy? He, there's no way he could get away. It was dark, but it wasn't that dark. I could see my car. So that was kind of a weird one. Those photos we can still have somewhere. Actually, I posted them. Let me just show you this place here. Put this down. Let's see if this is going to be wide enough. I mean, this thing's huge. Huge. And you go up those stairs, and then you can literally go up to the very top. And this guy was around the side, like I said, and he just vanished. And of course, uh, Julia was kind of admitting, we have to start mentioning to her. She goes, Yeah, that is kind of odd. And her sister's going, Ah, I bumped into him. He couldn't have been a ghost. I said, Well, the ghost can be solid. You know, the heck, where'd he go? It's just the strangest thing. Next day we came back, and sure as hell the fire did exist. It was still there. This, can I turn this way, or is this one way? You know what I mean? I'm going down a one-way road. I'm just trying to bring you around the damn thing. There was a fire out in this field here. Let me see, is this where it was? No, I think it was back here. A 
Yep, because I parked right here. See the parking here? Because it's the parking. We parked here. Out there, there was a fire in the field. And as we walked up to the monument here, about halfway, that's when he met us and said, can I help you and stuff? And then like that, turn around, talk to the girls for a second, and he's gone. So anyway, that's my weird, weird story for the... Uh, Pennsylvania Monument, so. And I actually, the next day we went back to the uh, event in uh, the Kittysburg, Kittysburg Battlefield Bash, and uh, we had Mark Nesbitt set up on a table right across me and a bunch of other people from some of the shows. And I showed them the stuff. And I mentioned to Mark, I said, you, you're from here, you've been here forever. He was a ranger before he did the ghost tours. And uh, he goes, no, because I don't know that person. I haven't got a clue. And you think he know all the reenactors and stuff by now. Uh, he said, but that's a common, common story. People will just uh, come out of nowhere, offer to help, and then vanish. Another group told us they had something similar a couple of years back where someone ran, ran into them up on, uh, they, were, they were in the park late, and this guy shows up with an old style flashlight with those big dry cell battery things on the top, on the bottom, and says, uh, you know, can I help you? He figures the guy was going to say, like, listen, we're closed and you got to get out. And he was like, nah, wasn't doing that. He was trying to offer help. He said, no, we don't need help or anything. They turn around. They talk a bit. Turn around. The guy's gone. And all of a sudden, like, a thousand feet up on the hill, they see this person walking. They can just see this light. He's carrying his light. They go, how the hell do you get up there that quick? It was like very similar stories that are here. This is an area here where they get a lot of, a lot of paranormal activity. Matter of fact, you probably see some of the famous ones here where you see these uh, apparitions walk out by the cannons and stuff. So I'm going to mess with the thermal here a little bit. Let's see if I see anything. person and I can barely see him because of all the clothes he's got on so that really makes me wonder now Back to white hot and black hot. Okay, now I'm black hot. Hang on, I'm still messing with this thing. getting weird stuff. I don't know what it is. I don't know exactly what I'm picking up. I'm going to go through these photos later because I can't. I'm seeing things through here that I don't see on my naked eye.
All anyway, right, folks. All right, I'm gonna see if I can shut this down. There's a little process to that. That was interesting, very interesting. I apologize for a lot of dead air in there, amongst things. I'm trying to see what the hell I'm doing. I'm trying to concentrate and use this equipment I'm not really familiar with. It's different than the other scopes I have. Menus are a little bit different. But we'll come back out later. Let's see what we can pick up. Definitely different. I wasn't expecting to get in the damn thing, so I got something there. I can't say it's paranormal, but I got some interesting stuff, so that's wild. <sighs> there you go. Chicken. Something I can eat. Not sure about their gravy. Maybe I'll get that tomorrow. Or tonight, I should say. Everyone's got their chuck. Spicy chicken sandwiches. It's funny, back here in the day when I used to come here, my daughter was young, somewhere right in this area, probably where Best Western is, there used to be a Howard Johnson's back there. I'd stay there, and right in front was a Shoney's, and uh, we would always stay there. It was like 30 some dollars a night, and of course I'd have to buy Holly a stuffed toy and a whole bit. But uh, it's kind of interesting. Was, I've been coming here for years, I and mean, I've been here if I said 40 plus times, I'm sure I wouldn't be exaggerating at all. I'm going to turn down here because there is parking. shut you guys off a little bit. All right, well, thanks. I'll do another video or two. Plus, not to mention, I'm still going up north. I've got other stuff to do there. So uh, I'll see you guys later.